three, two, one, let's go. What's going on, my beautiful channel family? Adam back with a video. Today is Wednesday, November the 30th. I love you guys and keep on looking up. Now, if you happen to be new here, let me say welcome to our channel. And on this channel, we're watching for the intimate return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Family, that trumpet is about to sound, and we're going to be ready when that appointed time comes. So guys, keep your eyes on the sky, because our redemption draweth nigh. Jesus is coming in the twinkling of an eye. So family, get ready to fly. Okay guys, I have a very important video for you today. Now one thing the Most High God has us doing on this channel is reporting news from the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. And today, I have some major Temple Mount news. If you can, please share this video and don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Guys, like I said, this is huge. So what we're going to do is briefly talk about this article from the Times of Israel. And then I'm going to tell you how it may be related to the Psalm 83 prophecy. Family, check this out. Let's go. Okay, on Sunday, November 27th, the Times of Israel published this article. And this end time headline reads, Activists no more. Ben Giver waffles about changing Temple Mount status quo. Family, I can't express to you how huge this is. Ben Giver, who was recently named National Security Minister in Benjamin Netanyahu's new government, is set to make good on his promise to allow Jewish visitors to pray at the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. A journalist in Israel recently asked the new security minister, will the security minister allow Jews to pray at the Temple Mount? In which the MK replied, the National Security Minister will ask for clarifications and will work against the racist policy on the Temple Mount. Now, family, this man, Ben Giver, has been very vocal about his thoughts on the status quo at the Temple Mount. When he was named Security Commissioner, I was like, oh, snap. Ben Giver is the biggest advocate in Israel in regards to Jewish rights at the Temple Mount. And as we know, at this moment, Jews have little to no rights at the Temple Mount, but Muslims can pretty much visit the site and pray there any time. Now, while Jews are only given a small window of time to visit in the morning and cannot pray at the site at all, and there's only certain gates that Jews are allowed to enter through. The status quo at the Temple Mount is very unfair, and the status quo was made to cater to the Muslims. Because they know changing the status quo at the Temple Mount could ignite the Middle East. There ain't no could to it. When it is changed eventually, it will ignite the Middle East. Now, if you remember, after Benjamin Netanyahu won the election, many warnings was given to the incoming government not to dare change that unfair status quo. The Temple Mount custodian Jordan issued a warning. The Ryan Party leader issued a warning. Hamas issued a warning. Islamic Jihad issued a warning, and many, many more. And all of these warnings have been recent. All in the past month, they have told the new government changing the status quo will lead to a regional conflict. Family, if they change the status quo, it could very, very well lead to the Psalm 83 prophecy. In the Word of God, in Psalm 83, verses 1 through 5, the Word of God says this, Keep not thou silence, O God, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. And in verses 6 to 11, it names the groups and nations that are going to come against Israel. And then if you jump down to Psalm 83, 12, it says, Who said, Let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. So you see, family, something is going to lead these Arab groups and Arab nations into Israel to try and wipe it off the map. But who are these groups and nations? They are Parts of Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, the Palestinians, parts of Egypt, Hezbollah, Arabs of the Sinai area, Syria, northern Iraq, Hamas of the Gaza Strip, and finally but not least, Jordan. And one of these things that all these groups and nations have in common is they have all recently made threats or remarks to Israel 
about changing the status quo at the Temple Mount. And we all know Jordan is the custodian of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. All these groups and nations mentioned in this prophecy would be extremely upset if they allowed Jewish prayer at the Temple Mount. Family, if Ben Giver is given his wishes and they change the status quo at the Temple Mount, could that be what ignites this Psalm 83 prophecy? I think it is very likely. All these nations and groups just mentioned have made warnings concerning the status quo at the Temple Mount, including Jordan, like I said, the Temple Mount custodian. Now, family, this is huge news. If the status quo is changed, then the Arabs will feel as if the Jews are desecrating their Al-Aska Mosque. And it could very well be the trigger to something similar to the six-day WAR of 1967. We've seen tensions at the Temple Mount increase over months. Allowing Jewish prayer at the Temple Mount could be the straw that breaks the camel's back and spawn a massive regional conflict, and possibly the Psalm 83 prophecy. Family, the way they treat Jews and Christians in regards to the Temple Mount is very unfair. The Bible is perfectly clear. That land belongs to the children of Israel. Family, I'll continue to monitor this situation and keep you updated on any new details. But yeah, guys, this has the potential to be the start of something very, very huge and prophetic inside of Israel. Now, family, in my humble opinion, it has never been more apparent that we are truly living in the biblical last days. Everything, guys, and I mean everything that Jesus said would be happening prior to his return, is all happening in this generation. It's all converging in this generation, the fig tree generation, the generation that shall not pass away. And guys, that's why the message of the gospel is so important in these end times. And as always, let's close this video out by me giving you the gospel of our salvation. Now, my beautiful family, the message of the gospel is actually simple. But what's happened in these end times, man's coming along, they're twisting the gospel, and they want to add words to it. And guys, it just don't work that way. So according to scripture found in our Bible, Jesus was born of a virgin and family. Jesus lived a sinless, perfect life. Jesus lived his entire life without ever once sinning. That's why Jesus was the perfect sacrifice for the remission of our sin debt. And at the age of 30, Jesus began his earthly ministry. And in three years, Jesus changed this entire world forever. At the age of 33, in the biggest act of love that humanity has ever seen or will ever see, Jesus was nailed on that cross. Jesus had a crown of thorns shoved upon his head. Jesus spilled his perfect, innocent blood for the mission of our sins, my sins, your sins, your son's sins, your daughter's sins, everybody's sins. Family, Jesus did it all on the cross. And family, Jesus lay dead for how long? For three days, three days, three days. And that third day, he busted that tomb wide open. Hey, guys, no tomb could hold our Messiah. Then Jesus ascended to go be with the Father. And on this channel and many other channels, we do know he's coming back for us soon. And family, what is it we're looking for? It's that Titus 2.13, Blessed Hope. And world events and Bible prophecy is declaring the soon and intimate return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Family, stay in that full armor of God and keep on looking up because our redemption draweth nigh. Jesus is coming soon. Well, my beautiful family, as always, I want to thank you for watching. I love you guys. Thank you for all the love and support. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and feel free to share it. Family, it helps out so much and I truly do appreciate it. And if any of you guys are new here, Hit that subscribe button and join our channel family. Because on this channel, you guys are more than a number. You guys are loved and appreciated. And I pray for you guys on a daily basis. And speaking of prayer, if any of you have any prayer requests at all, drop them in the comment section below. Myself and someone from the prayer team, we'd be honored to pray over your prayer requests. And if any of you guys need a free King James Version Bible, please email me at emailwatchmanadam at gmail.com. And as soon as we can, we'll get a free Bible right to you. I think everybody that wants a free copy of God's Word should be able to get a free copy of God's Word. Amen? I get a lot of emails, family, so just be patient. I promise you I will get back to you. 
And also, if any of you guys either want to contribute to either the Bible ministry or our homeless outreach, check the description box below. There's ways you could do so. 100% of all donations either go to the Bible ministry or to the homeless outreach. As always, please pray about it first. I truly do appreciate all the help you give us guys with outreach programs. This wouldn't be possible without you guys. So I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. Well, family, to next time, Brother Watchman Adam signing out. I love you guys and keep on looking up because Jesus is coming soon. Take care, family.